Bible. I want you to go first of all to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Everybody can have a Bible today because we're in church. And the word is the sword, the, our word is the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. We can't fight the devil off of life's word. When Jesus was tempted in, in the wilderness, what did he use to defeat the devil? The word of God. He quoted Old Testament scripture. He quoted the Deuteronomy. He quoted Leviticus. So, Psalm 119. And we're going to kind of touch on verses 67, I believe. No, 71 through 75. I had asked me to read. I had people to read. The Holy Spirit is guiding me in a different direction right now. So we're going to look at verses 71 through 75, I believe, and uh, Psalm 119. And then keep your finger on Psalm 119 and go to Hebrews 12. And we're going to read verse, we're going to do verses 6 through uh, 11 and 12. And, and I don't plan to do, but a couple, three of those verses out of Psalm 119. And on one of those verses out of Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 6 through 11 frames the message. And Psalm 119, 71, uh, who, actually, maybe 67 through 75. I'll, I'll get it in a minute. The whole thing knows what he's doing. Uh, but what I want you to do is just open your Bible to those verses and, and go ahead and read them silently to yourself. I want you to get the message. I want to use for a thought this morning um, Good Conflicts Part 2. Good Afflictions. Good Afflictions. Hebrews chapter 119. That, what, what is one of the things and characteristics of Hebrews 119? Anybody know something that uh, have a Bible fact about Hebrews chapter 119? No, no, actually, excuse me. Psalm, Psalm 119. If it's not a chapter, it's a number. Uh, what do you know about Psalm 119? What one of the things? Yeah, you know, I'm sitting down. Thank you all so much. God bless you. Let, let me thank Bill Ray. Bill Ray has surgery. Call me. When you well, the gospel come and usher. I'm going to stay home. Be well. Uh, but he wants to come usher. He wants to just die of surgery. And, and Vincent is here today. He's struggling with some health issues. And, uh, but he said, you know, if I don't come, they will come. So I'm coming. So I want you to look at Psalm 119. And tell me if you look at Psalm 119. They, well, number song. Psalm the number first is chapter, but numbers. Uh, Psalm 119. Just about the whole text. What is one of the things in the characteristics of Psalm 119? What do you know about Bible fact about Psalm 119? Anybody? This is the Noah Bible. And it's the longest book in the Bible. Some 150 verses, I believe. All right. But, but I just want to touch on. And when I love that song, I, I have studied through that song. And I heard y'all talking about reading and learning this morning in the women's class. And I only did three or four verses at a time. And I meditated on the verses. And I read God, how many? 176. Okay, good. Holy Spirit. Psalm 119. And so I want to read a couple of verses out of that. And then we're going to Hebrews 12. But, and then you get the message in the mail. It's already typed up. It's already emails ready to go. But listen to me, you know, uh, today. Because this is an important message. Because about something we all go through. And about something we're going to all go through all of our lives. It's something our children are going to go through. And if you will hear God, then you'll get a message for God how to handle things that you deal with every day. How to help things that you're going to deal with from the time you come into this world and the time you leave. Isn't it wonderful that God wants to show you something that can help you? That is going to be with you all your life. You will never escape from what I'm going to talk about. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care what kind of education you get. You know, guy named uh, Kate Spade. Some of y'all know Kate Spade or know off Kate Spade. She makes purses, very expensive purses. And I used to go to Korea, and when I go to Korea, the women at work will want Kate Spade purses. And I would buy them in Korea for about one third of what they cost in America because I would buy a bootleg. I have a trunk full of Kate Spade, Coach, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Rolex, and in Korea they call Rolex, they call Lolex. They don't pronounce the R's in Korea very well. And so you want a Rolex watch? No, I want Rolex. Uh, and, and, but, but, but all the money she has, she committed suicide just the other day. Anthony Bourdain, uh, parts of Nova, 61 years, all the world, talking about eating and culture, committed suicide. Just the other day. So, so money and fame and celebrity will not protect you from what I'm going to talk about in just a moment. But God can give us instructions. God can give us his word that will protect us from this thing that all of us got to deal with. I want to impress on you, your children are going to have to deal with this and you can't protect them. You ain't got no money, friend. You ain't got no time. 
You ain't got enough knowledge. You ain't got enough wisdom. You, you can't be, I'm not present. That means everybody. You are not omniscient. That means you're your thing. And you're not omnipotent. You ain't got no power. Your children are going to have to deal with something that you can't help them deal with. That you can't protect them from. That you can't isolate them from. That you can't insulate them from. That you can't give them an immunization or an inoculation to keep them from getting this disease. You are going to have to deal with it all your life. And so in Psalm 119, 67 through 75, and Hebrews 12, 16, 12, 11, God reveals some things to us that all of us will have to deal with. And to get us to focus, I want to use some thought this morning, good afflictions. Write that down, good affliction. Putting good and afflictions together seem like a contradiction. It seems like a paradox. I'm going to preach in the next week or something called the paradox of greatness. That getting greatness and being great is not the way you think it is. A paradox is something that seems to be untrue. But as a fellow thought, it proves itself to be true. So it seems paradoxical. It seems uh, conflicting to say there are good afflictions that don't seem right, preacher. Just hold on, just hold on. Don't leave, don't get mad. Because how can my afflictions be different? How can hard times, difficult times, troubling times, distressing times, miserable times, and disturbing times, how can our political situation that we're going through be good for you? I want to talk about good afflictions. And just so you don't think I'm talking off the top of my head, that I have no biblical basis for my thesis, and that somehow I'm speaking contradictory to what you heard and learned, and contradictory to what the Bible says. I'm going to read just two verses, three verses of Psalm 119. For David said in verse 67, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. David said in verse 71, In case you still don't believe me, it is good for me, good God of life, that I have been afflicted. It's good that I've been broke. I've been in debt. It's good that I've had marriage problems. It's good that I've had children problems. It's good that I've had husband problems. It's good that I have wife problems. It's good. It's good for me that I've been afflicted. Because keep Mary Webster defines an affliction as anything that makes you miserable. Anything that causes you pain. Anything that causes you grief. Some of you got children. And they're the first. And then he said, it is good for me. Will y'all better stand up? That I have been afflicted. That I might what? Learn. What does it say? Read it. Oh, I guess you might as well read it. Verse 71. That I might learn thy statutes. All right. Hmm? And then go, David goes on to verse 75 and says, The Lord of my mouth, that's verse 75. I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thy what? Has done what? Lesson one, lesson one, God is the source of affliction. David said, It was God that said to me. Now, God may work through things, God may work through people. And God may even allow me to ever fix you, but the source of affliction is God. Because God's in charge of everything. God's over everything. God knows everything. God can handle everything. So if you are being afflicted, it is God who's allowing you. I'll tell you why in a minute. But it's God. So maybe you ought to talk to God and stop arguing with your husband. Maybe y'all talk to God and stop being bothered with your children. Maybe y'all will get off the internet looking for a job and talk to God. Because the reason you don't have a job is God. The reason you 
don't have a good job. It's gone. The reason I, I, I can understand that God allows you something in his missing will, but it's still, it's still God. So when I'm experiencing affliction financially and socially and job and health and money and wife and children, I need to talk to God. Because David said, God was not in me. God was not in kind. God was not in vision. He said, in thy faithfulness, Thou hast afflicted me. They said, God, you are right to afflict me. Because you always make right decisions. You always make right choices. I thank God for the number of things He doesn't let me have. I thank God for the number of women He doesn't let me be with. Mm -hmm. I thank God for mother. Who told me that some women don't mean no good? You don't need everything. But God is the charge of everything. When the devil afflicted Job, who gave God Job the devil permission to afflict God? In fact, God even is more important than that. If you go with me to over to Malachi at the end of the New Testament, God takes credit. For bringing evil and afflictions. God said in Malachi. Malachi is the last book in the Old Testament. Before you get to Matthew, God said that He takes credit for causing affliction. God said in Malachi uh, 2. That thou, if there is affliction in the city, if there is evil that come in the city, had not the Lord done it. God said, if things are going bad in your life, maybe you don't like the fact I said God did it. Maybe it's easier for you when you say that God allowed it. That make you feel better? Because God got some focus. I was just struggling with the fact that God does what we call it. But see, God don't think of anything. Remember I told you one of the x-ray calls that all things work together for good? Now everything in your life ain't good at it to you. But God has a purpose. So I know you struggle with that. You struggle with saying God causes evil. Well, if it makes you feel better, let you let me say God allows evil. Does that make you feel better? I don't know how much better you feel if evil visited you, what God allowed it, what God did it. I don't even feel better that you got to talk to us because God allowed it or because God did it. Now, I know God didn't choose your husband because you talk to God. But he allowed you to choose your husband. Knowing the kind of husband you were choosing. When you're blind to God, God wants you to give me the, 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 the skinny one. But God still did not prevent you from marrying that man. Hmm? God did not forbid you. In fact, you got mad with God. You got angry with God. You got mad with your, your mother. I know you got mad with your mother because she didn't like it. She didn't get mad with God. She didn't let you. <laughs> listen, listen. My mom and I had a, had a tough time on my marriage. I was 22, 23 years old. She said, boy, you too. You too young to get married. I'm like, no, I'm, no, I know. I know so what I was doing. I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm out of the house. I'm in the school. I'm in all the city. I'm in the world. And Robert Mama had a problem too. She said, You don't need to marry that boy. She said, Mama, I'm gonna marry him. She said, Girl, you just eat up one thing you wish you had. <laughs> now, what we did because we were rebellious or, or not aware, God still allowed us to get into the situation we find ourselves in. Amen. And so, since God knows, and since God allowed, and since God cares, then I'll be talking to God about my situation. So you don't want to let me get here. I, I, won't, I won't blame God. I won't let you know. I know y'all struggle with God to allow me. Look at this. This is what God says in Malachi 2 2. Malachi 2 2. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay your heart to give me, to give over to my name, said Lord, folks. 
I will even do what? Wait a minute, bro. Terry, he said he's going to send a church. I don't know the point of the devil did that. He said, if you will not lay at the heart, if you will not hear, if you will not lay at the heart to do what? Praise me. Say hallelujah. To thank the God, I will send a curse even upon you. I will curse your blessings. You know, I know some folks got blessed right now that have turned to curses. That job you thought was a blessing that I ran you out of here. But you were so happy, I got a good job. I got a good job. <laughs> but I said, you're going to give me a blush. One of the things you got to do is Christians learn to glorify God. And Paul glorified him as sin. Because he said, but let us make a sacrifice of praise. Give me the title of Hebrews 13, 15. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to God. I know you don't want to do that. God's not going to I know you ain't made that way. So that's not going Let us therefore, he said in Hebrews 13, 15, make a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to God. Is that what God wants? You know, I feel about when my wife and my children say thank you. We were together last week, and my daughter Taylor said, Dad, thank you. Thank you. My son Taylor said, Dad, thank you. And they, they should have said it. You know, why do y'all at the zoo and Coronado and Mission Bay? I'm babysitting. You better thank me. You need to thank me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That little wild luck with that guy. She never like read that. She can't be still. She moves. And, and bold, we walk along the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, they got a seawall. She was two years old, she wants to walk along the seawall. I'm out of my mouth. My mom said, You better go get that baby, your dad, and walk the seawall. She left with me. They won't leave me often. This is up, y'all. Y'all don't get it. I don't get it. I told them, like, don't be surprised. I told them, let you whatever you want to do. I had a sort of good thing. I got a lot of shit. <laughs> she cried on the seawall. I want to see a picture of my friend let her go. It's walking on the ocean. <laughs> and they got to be crying. Don't walk on the edge. Don't walk on the rocks. Just flip it on the way. But she didn't read it. <laughs> I was trying to look there. I didn't even jump the shoe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I won't keep you on either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hurt my feelings. <laughs> you can't go across the house like, oh, it's the clear. We were in Chicago. She lived on the 102nd floor. She was trying to, I love her. She got an observation for everybody. Ain't scared of nothing. Ah. But God says, if you were not here, listen y'all, if you were not here, if you were not laid to heart and give glory to my name, I did the moment, I will even send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessing. I've cursed him already because you do not lay it to heart. There are some things we're going through that's an affliction we're experiencing that we won't listen to God. I wish you could miss your children. They can't live in sin unless they God to bless them. God said, the eyes of the Lord are the righteous. His ears are open to the cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Even to cut off the dirt of them from the earth. That many of the afflictions that we are experiencing simply because we fail to give God glory and priority in our lives. I'm, I'm trying to hear all of you. I'm going to send you a message for you. Email. If I don't have email, check it out. Get it to you. But God, things that happen to us do not happen accidentally, randomly, or unintentionally. God is very deliberate the way he does. It may seem like accident to you. But God allowed it to happen. And God made it for it to happen. One of the preachers said Monday night, uh, Tuesday night, maybe Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. 
He said, your mama told me not to go to the Nashville. And they had an accident on the way to the Nashville. Car turned over, and he was the only one that got hurt. That was intention. That was the literal gospel. That was willful on the gospel. That was planned. Now, it may have seemed evil to him and to you and I, but he came to understand it was a blessing. He learned that he had to leave, listen to the Spirit of God. Because his mama told him not to go, his spirit told him not to go, but he went. And that was a good one. That was a good one. Because he told him to hear the prayer. No, I just thought I I know the sudden crux of my life, so the change that occurred in my life was taking me to listen to God and not listen to God. Hearing the word of God, responding to the Spirit of God, and doing the thing of God, that's what changed my life. God closed doors for me for a while because I couldn't listen. I told my cousin of this thing, he's had a business, he's doing quite well. 12 years of business. And I have been, by the way, I did a concert recently. And I can't wait to just sell it. It's about to so well, I've got so much business. Maybe God's trying to tell you, you need to talk to Him. Like for the last 12 years, you've been successful. Talk to your planet, your skills, your technique, your job, your technique. But the reason God has turned your blessing to a curse because you've done it, and you've not talked to Him. He said, I'm going to go home and I didn't. Sometimes God is used to seven stuff. But that's the curse. That's the curse. Just because you get away with something, and just because you get something, don't mean it's a blessing. I'll get to that in a minute. So God says, I'm in charge. I'm in control. You, you know why bad times really don't bother me? They must be just bother me. Oh, I know God is somewhere watching. God allowed me to go through this bad time. And he let me go through this bad time. And he's not going to let my bad time be any worse than he's able to do something about it. So, so why am I going to just, just kind of wait on God? I, I'm in this bad time. I can't see my way out of this bad time. I can't be able to get out of this bad time. Uh, God, I, I just wait on you because I know that some people want me to learn from this bad time. I know you want me to look to you while I'm in this bad time. I know you want me to pray with you. To you while I'm in this bad time, and I know you want me to worship you and praise you. You know, we know Miss Trump because I know you Miss Trump out a bad time. You know why Sunday school is about last part of me? Because David said before I was sick, I was praying, but now I've kept that word. And I know as long as I keep God's words, He will keep, He will temper the afflictions that are turning in my, in my life. That's why I can't blow it off. That's why I can't just. Come see, come see, I make it bigger. That's why I can't be late. I can't be late. I can't be late. Well, I remember when I used to come late all the time, God didn't really open the book like he's doing right now. And, and, and that's said, what, what I did was, bad times taught me some stuff. It, that I made what? Learn that statue. It taught me to keep your word. And your word says in Romans 12, don't be slothful, but fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Romans 12, 11. And so I said, God, I know that's what your word teaches, so I'm going to be on time because your word teaches me to be on time. I'm not going to stand for a little Saturday night. I'm not going to mention any friends on Saturday week that I can't get there on time because your word teaches me to be on time. Be not slothful, but feminine in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Romans 12 11. And so it's like, well, I, I don't have to get in the young girl. I can do what I want to do the young girl. But I've learned something from my afflictions, and my affliction taught me to keep God's word. You know, we not know this worship. It's not me for any kind of reason. Because my affliction taught me Hebrews 10 25. So say not the sinner of yourselves together, as a man of son is. But exhorting one another, and even more so, as you see the day. I see the day coming. The day of Carolina Day is coming. And it's Friday, because a lot of folks ain't got it. So the Carolina Day is Friday, we're about to have to turn. They have to slide that bill. And as I see the day approaching, 
I take God to be the most serious. I take my worship to be the most serious. I take my Sunday school to be the most serious. I take my Bible class to be the most serious. I take my fellowship to be the more serious. The end of the thing, you know, you know, you know, you know, because the fiction taught me to keep what they said, to keep it going. Psalm 1967, before I was afflicted, I was strapped. <laughs> but now, I keep that word. There you see. It is good for me <laughs> that I was afflicted, that I might learn that statues. Maybe it's unfortunate that God has a huge place <laughs> Trust me, God does use. Afflictions are good for us. Afflictions are good for us. You know what I said about it? And you got, you know, Bible scholars, take a verse 2 here and there. Because God said, 2 Timothy 2 4, study. This is if you want to, you got time. Being busy, you ain't got to work, you ain't got a job, you ain't got to work, 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 you ain't got Working that need not be ashamed. Right is about the word of truth. My affliction taught me that obeying God makes my life better. So I look at my life before I was obeying, what's the same thing? I look at my life after. I jump from one step. And God is so gracious to you that the other morning, feed you, give you a job, but they don't know that they have afflicted. Because if you don't afflict, you heal them. And that's why I feel for them. They don't get it. Old folks can say, you run, but you can't. You get back, but you can't. But y'all don't say more for that than you do. You run, but you can't hide, you get back, but you can't get away. Y'all just awful for y'all life. <laughs> y'all need to come over every now and then. Just go back to the Franklin house. Go back to the Harris house. Go back to the Rose house. Go back to the Rose house. Go back to the Chan house. Go back to the Chan house. Go back to the Chan house. Hey, now, let's talk to old folks. I see old folks are missing some of our lives. And old folks say something. Good thing. You know what the word of God means? Why can't you show them that? You got to tell me in 2 Timothy 3 16. Holy Spirit. It's given by inspiration of God. And it's proper for doctrine, for proof, for correction. For instruction and righteousness, the man of God may be thoroughly furnished of the every good work. We not sell the community. We don't walk out on community. We don't make the plan on community side. But Jesus said, for all of us, eat this food and drink this cup. You do show forth more dead. See, I, I, I didn't do that. My affliction was to go to God. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to make it clear this message up to you. Number one, God control you know the first place. He told the devil how much and how little he could control them. God told the devil he can do the ten years. God will still work. And so when the devil is realized, the devil can be your husband, maybe your wife, maybe your boss, maybe your girlfriend, maybe your children, he still says, I can't, that devil can only do so much. I just smile when folks about me. They don't know who might be my brother. I don't think I can argue about what we have to do. I got a big brother. Come on, please. Come on. Come on, come on, call the table. You might go back and do it. <laughs> you ever heard of folks like that? I know. I know. I just mean old folks. I saw a man look like him. They were bell. I mean, I was going to go in the street, rolling down the hill, I and mean, they were bell. I mean, she would hold her own and get it done. The other woman said, let me have him. He didn't see him. She said, I'm him. I told you. I brought some tough old folks. <laughs> so, 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 so God, one, is it, I won't say God called me. That's a picture. You know what the word said he did. You know what God told Moses? What God told Moses? Moses, Lord, I don't speak your words. Moses, you can't make it down the line. Exactly. Devil is in the hot 
Lord, but they want to speak. They said, oh, I'm still speaking. We need a study. And God said, who made the mouth nervous? Who made the blind? Who made the dumb? He said, give me credit. Don't get that to the devil. I didn't struggle. But that's because you're living in God. And you're assuming that what God does that's not like you think to be his own. And God's the purpose for everything he does. And it's a good purpose. That's one, God's control. That's two, God allowed. What's that God does? God allowed the scripture. Can y'all can y'all buy that one? Um, you gotta explain to God why you believe when you get there. <laughs> why you can help what he said. You know, let, let me give you one more thing. Y'all should y'all should remember one. Y'all should remember that. Oh, in Amos chapter 3, verse 6. Amos chapter 3, verse 6. God said, Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall therefore be evil in the city and the Lord had not done it? Who sent Israel in the bondage? Who sent Israel into the land of the Chaldean? Who allowed the three people born to run the Who allowed you to be broke? And we're going to see why in a minute. Now, I know you're struggling for a while. I made some bad decisions. Who allowed you to make that bad decision? Who didn't stop making that decision? Who didn't overrule you? Correct me. That's what I let you do. Like that. God, God is in control. God allows. And when God does it, he's right and he's faithful. They say, I know, Lord, that in thy faithfulness, I know, Lord, that thy judgments are right, and that thou and thou faithfulness have a secret. Thanks to God, you are doing the right thing when you let me get that call. You are doing the right thing when my mama would let me hang out in places I had not been hanging out. Sometimes as parents, we get away from right? We, we know our children are so bad. We know our children are so bad. But we won't listen to God. We listen to our emotions, our feelings. You know right people. Better than your children. And God holds your child. You know you say that God will see all that children. God's job is called the blessing. Look at all. So God knows. God knows. Lastly, God has a purpose for us. God has a purpose. Whatever the source of this thing is. Financial help, good job, money. Paul was still physical. He had a thorn in his flesh, a blessing of Satan, love to him. And he didn't talk to Satan, he talked to me. He talked to God, God said, I'm not going to move this thing. Now I could move Paul, but I'm not going to move it. Yeah, I allowed Satan to buffet you, but I'm not going to move it. Have you talked to God about your affliction? You talked to him about it. You talked less to him about it. And more to God. They knew that you were born, they called them up and daddy. She had to be checking a better joke and call them up and daddy. They knew they called them up and daddy. They didn't call them up and daddy. They called up. The next time your child called you, have you talked to God? Do you understand that what you're going through is this? Why would you say that shack up marriage? What you're going through is this. Only you out doing drugs and alcohol and being disrespectful of God and disobedient God, what you're going through is good. Remember I tried to call my dad and said, Dad, I can't make it to this tomorrow. And he says, Oh, you hell. It. It's good, son. You can step upside down and hit the bucket of water for a little while. I just hate it. It's good, son. Remember I called my mom and said, Yo, my mama broke his heart off. I mean, I don't know what I can make. I need to leave him to my hell. And my mom said, Boy, they're done for going to step in. They're broke for the boss. They're both for the awesome. They make it just to try to get it Go live where they live. Go eat where they eat. Go shop where they shop. They're both for them. Everybody both got money. They were telling me that my afflictions were good for me. Hmm, what did I have to tell you, child? Baby, let me see that thing. Let's see what I got. Let's see what I can do. You ain't got nothing. That's why you can't give it to me. You can't even rest. You can't ignore God. It's been God to respond. 
your child didn't know God, and you turn into God, what did God don't do? He say what? As a man sword, so shall he be. He that sword to the flesh shall suffer corruption. He that sword to the spirit shall still be. And I want to ask you why. You see all that stuff they go through exactly what we said that I wonder why. Thank God for that. David never asked God why. He was a better never, David never asked God well, why am I going through all this thing. He said, Lord, thou hast been faithful. You're right. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to tell you a minute why. I'm not really thinking. You can read it. The book, I'll send it to you. Whatever the source of the book, you made a bad mistake, how you sin, because God just wants to make you an example of testimony. Whatever the source, it only has two purposes. Whether you're in the situation you're in because of bad decisions or bad choices, God still has a purpose. And then we have to. Whether you're in this situation through no fault of your own, it just happened. You know, a lot of stuff that happens up there because that bad stuff in the world. Stuff just happens. You can't live in a world where not be bad because bad is all around us. You don't have to do anything for bad to come to you. You weren't bothered by it when you got cancer. You weren't bothered by it when you got diabetes. You weren't bothered by it when you got high blood pressure. You weren't bothered by it when you fell and broke your leg. Some bad stuff happened because we live in a bad world. A world that's contaminated with sin. A world that's infected with sin. The world is all around the city. You can't walk. I heard you admit that in the other You can't walk in this world and not some bad stuff get on you because bad folk are all around you and there's a bad person inside you. So whether you are in a situation, whether you're broke because you made bad for another decisions. Let me tell you, I was broke for two years. I made bad for another decision that I didn't worship God. I don't, as, as much as I'm trying to spend my money wisely, I'm spending it wrong. I was borrowing too much. I had too many credit cards. I had too much debt on my credit cards. And they didn't tell me, I'm telling you, that's the rest of you can say. You can't borrow your way out of debt. Brother Ben, because of that, I went to a bond debt consolidation company. You know what a consolidation debt for you? You know what they tell me? You're like, man, shit, you can't hear me. <laughs> Ain't God doing it? Not, they didn't let me help me. I still be there. But I was so in debt, so aware of debt, so consumed with debt, that I go to a debt consolidation company, you know, they won't forget about it. High interest rate, 20 cents. And they said, We don't want you to work, boy, you too bad shit. <laughs> Praise the Lord, like, thank God, thank God. You know how I got out of debt? First of all, I started working on my debt. I just started working on my debt. And Give me some feeling of success. You ain't got, this is sweet. You ain't got your wrist on. I just said, get this counselor. But I promise you, go, you can say it worse. They tell you what they learn, I'll tell you what I live. Now, first of all, you start working with it. I thought paying out a little pet first. They did two things. They gave me a sense of comfort. As you can see, the day going down. Then as I paid up a little bit, I thought I'd take it from the community. So that money I was putting on the little bit. Now I'm combining that money with the other money, that's what I'm paying on my kitchen. Then when I pay that off, I start paying a little bit more without paying. Same thing we're doing in church. When we're doing church right now, we pay more than us before we do That money we had for the money, we're still saving. We're not going to stop saving stuff we're paying more than God. And we got two savings now. One will put 5% in every week, and one will put $600 in one. And we're going to have two big savings now by the grace of God. Because the $1,800 month we're paying, for March, that March that paid off that February, March, then now we're going to save that money. This church is in no debt. We bought the property, no debt. We paid our church, no debt. We don't have to buy nothing. Yeah. Now, I, I, I didn't mean to go there, but that's what God put us in. But you, I don't care how, you can't be. Listen, I had to take a first, second, and third mortgage on my home. Woo, wait, boy, you're in fashion. But look at me now. Before I was afflicted, I was in debt. Before I was inflicted, I couldn't pay my bill. Before I was afflicted, but then my afflictions changed. I spent my money. And my affliction changed where I spent my money. 
My affliction changed how I spent my time. My affliction changed me for worse than my time. And God blessed me and delivered me from my affliction. So you want to keep your door and not be sick. You want to keep spending what you're spending and living where you live and not be sick. God, God, God. So don't tell me how bad your debt is. I don't give any of you that. I don't give any of you that. I don't give any of you that. I don't give any I, I still got a lot of credit cards, but I have no, I have no balance. And the only thing I got them because I don't want to cancel them, cancel the change in the credit score. But I'm going to be fine. I don't care about the credit score. I can be zero. I don't care. I don't need no credit. <laughs> I'm looking at my wallet now, and I don't care full time at the time. And the Jake looked at me like, ooh, we man, you got credit cards. Great thoughts on the credit cards. But, but I have a credit card now. Look what that
Verse 21 says, but, but, but because the preacher itself has also been delivered from the bondage of corruption to the glory of the children. For we know that the whole preaching and church and growth in pain together now. So even now we groan in pain in our physical bodies. But one day our physical bodies are going to be changed and renewed and we'll have new bodies. All right? So, so right now we still struggle in our physical bodies. And so when God allows us to struggle physically, there's a good reason. I have cancer for a good reason. I'm telling you that. I have cancer, not for a bad reason, but for a good reason. Now, I have cancer, but cancer doesn't have cancer. <coughs> so we're not going to say that. Now, you can't talk, see something you're talking about. Hell, the guy had to say I was sick for God. You can go, 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 I can't claim that. Listen, you sick, you sick. You sick. How old is it? I didn't have, I didn't have a confirmed place. He said, I got an confirmed place. So, so I have cancer for a good reason. To let you know, cancer, don't scare me. Don't have to scare me. Cancer, what? My doctors are perplexed, amazed, and sometimes upset that I'm, I'm no more bothered than I'm bothered. He gave me a whole book to read about my type of cancer. And I read the book, so I got it, doc. I'm good. I wasn't surprised when I was diagnosed with cancer because no one ever told me. I wasn't surprised when God told me the doctor was going to lie and the doctor told me no more. I wasn't surprised when he said, you don't need radiation, you don't need chemotherapy, you just need to let me watch you to make sure it doesn't change. And so I can charge you your Medicare and your Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm good, Doc. I'm good. Go ahead. I'll do that. I think that was the last year. I got enough time to cancel last time. I don't want to be back. 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 So don't you feel sorry for me, because I know where that's going to die from. You better go talk to God about what you feel that's from. You know, we, we like to bring up the cow, you know, and cause it. That's kind of what makes you well. But then, damn, you don't get to do it. Who are you going to say, God, so you're going to get to do it? Lord, you like me. Lord, you like me. You like me. You like me. If God gives you 10 more years, I hug you. I'm almost 80, Kim. If he says you're going to live 85, I'll be jumping. Lord, Jesus. I'm glad he didn't tell me, because I go out and do something stupid. I jump on that plane, I go, I go parasail, I ain't gonna die. <laughs> I go clip that, I ain't gonna die. So come on, take a chance, I'm gonna know something, and we lose our mind. Take over, I said, hey, hey, I'm gonna have to be so next to you, everything's over. Go on, you go on, you go on. Aren't you glad I go check everything? Well, God told me not to worry about cancer. Because you don't want you to worry about the situation and circumstances in your heart. My cancer has not hindered me. My cancer has blessed me and drew me close to God. Gave me a greater awareness of God. Gave me a greater attention of God. Call me to go near to God. Call me to hear God and to listen to God and to be faithful to God. And the reason I'm struggling with life is because I'm going to hurry to take God. Can I run out of time? And y'all can't get your time. That's the frustration. I ain't got my time. And I waste my time. I don't have time to talk about chicken and money and chicken and with fried and grill. I'm talking about fucking food that lie. I don't have much time. And I'm running out of time. And you are too. <laughs> children are good time. I need to get to your children. I need to get to your best friends. Because I'm running out of time. And that's why I'm running out of time. We all want to. Now, don't go home to the God said the past thing. Live 15 more years, and I'll be back in 15 years when he's gone. He didn't say that. He just said, This cancer might go kill you. He said, You'll die from something, but it won't be cancer. And then we'll wipe them away. But remember, no surprise, I read the word. He said, He's the point of the man who wants to die. And that's why I don't grieve. I don't get all emotional. I don't get excited. I was gossiping. I did. 
tell me, say, you know, you know, I will miss my mother, I thank God for me. I mean, my father, I thank God for me. I will miss my sister, my brother, I thank God for me. I know you one day, but I'm going to time, but time, but time. They're talking too fast, and nobody else knows. <laughs> Oh, my brother got a mission of family. He was just talking. What are you talking about? Slow down. And then that two year old, oh, God, at least she talks fast, she walks fast, she eats fast, she does everything. I mean, she is in the air. Oh, you're like, man, I'm going to stop you, girl. And when she ain't got nothing to do, she didn't. The bread that old. Y'all are not. Y'all, if y'all do women back then, don't let like her, y'all in trouble. <laughs> you thought I was playing the girl, y'all, yeah, right? <laughs> okay, that boy. Ah, <laughs> uh, I laughed, I love the Lord, I mean, he got it. I was about to get him. He got it. I told him to get him, I said, listen, I'll put him in the ministry. Get him. And if I do school, and if I do education, and if I do money, I said, go, I'll put him in the ministry. I know if you see the dimension that God got. See, I, I didn't know why my mother wanted me to be a picture when she wanted to be president. I got it now. I got it now. God says there are two reasons. One reason is to produce righteousness. You know, the reason God beats us up for you. In fact, like the word um, chastisement, a word friction in the Hebrew, now I'll tell you what Ruff said. Ruff said it means to be very in pains. But in the Hebrew, in the Bible, it means to be forced. It means to be browbeaten. It means to be several words. One of them is used the word affliction. They said, it was good for me, to turn it into English, to be have been browbeaten. It's good for me to have been forced. That's what David said, John. That's what the word means. Because before I was browbeaten, before I was uh, forced, I went astray. But now, because you browbeat me and you forced me, I keep them your word. So, word affliction, in its original meaning, means to be browbeat, it means to be forced, it means to be weakened, it means to be chastised. God, before I were, was weakened by you, I went straight. But now I keep your word. So what God is trying to do when we are going through afflictions is force us, browbeat us, and weaken us so we will come to him. So affliction then, when talks go through some afflictions everywhere, when Apple go through some affliction and it has. God is just simply trying to produce more righteousness in him. In Hebrews chapter 12, God said very clearly, it's not in the Bible. It's not on Facebook. It's not on Tinder. It's not on LinkedIn. It's not on Periscope. It's not on Snapchat. What else is it? It's in his word. In Hebrews 12, verse 11, this is what Paul said. Now, no chastening, no forcing, no browbeating, no weakening, for the moment seeing joyous. None of us like to be browbeating. Hmm? None of us like to be forced. Hmm? None of us like to be wicked. Hmm? He said, no chastening, no forcing, no browbeating, for the moment, or if you go back into the English definition, no pain, no misery, no suffering, no grief for the moment, seeing joyous. Being sick, being weak, not able to do what you want to do, not able to do it, go. It's not very joyous, is it? That's a good reason. That's a good reason. No chastening, that's what the Bible says. No, man. For the moment, seeing, I would tell you, Kim, it's about me. If Lord, why can't I be joyful in this situation? I'm saying that. Paul said, because they talk for two. I, I thought I was being a good Christian kid, but I couldn't be happy when I was not happy. The, the thing bothered me, the thing hurt me, the thing grieved me, the thing angered me. And I, I, was, I, I was that both happy. No, no matter what happened, baby, I got my 
جوا 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 دیدی دوست من گفت
Yeah, church folk, they, 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 the devil did church folk. You know, the pastor didn't care. You just try to get close to Kevin. Then when he knocked you down, I'll be able to pick you up. <laughs> keep picking, keep picking. You all going to learn something. <laughs> Well, I just love my daughter. She's singing some baby girl. She's like seven, 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 seven. She can sing. No, she can sing. That's all. But no, she's 38 now. She won't sing. Baby, sing. Baby, yeah, yeah. oh, fashion. I'll sing. I said, well, then we go. Then we should sing to me. Turn my grades up. Like, baby, God, you're a test. Ain't you the bad guy? Baby, God, yes. Trying to tell you something. God, yes. Trying to tell you something. Don't, don't say it in my funeral. You don't say it to me now. Don't say it. And she come up there and come up. I remember my daddy. I want to sing. Roger, I'll take you. Sit down, girl. <laughs> and then she says, I'll take She doesn't put the washing down. She, she doesn't sing the kids in the seven room. She's singing in New York and she's singing in Afghanistan. She won't sing that no more. It's a girl that knows education from your head. And you sing your daddy, so. <laughs> that, that's her country. <laughs> that's what makes God give the gifts to folk who want you. Just imagine if I can sing. Look at what you're saying in case of this name of this thing. You're going to come to every Sunday. Preacher is Michael Hartwell. I'm the family of hope. Come on up. The second reason, the second reason, God just won't humble you. The first reason, God will make you righteous. The second reason, he just won't do He just won't humble you. So when you're going through stuff, when you're being beat up by life, just remember that God is trying to get me to get out my house. Because in the verse just before that, Peter said, verse 5, Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another. Some people don't want to pass y'all. You don't want to be like that? Brother Michael, don't call me that. All of you submit yourselves one to another. Be clothed in the middle of what? For God is what? God resists the proud and giving peace to them that are. You remember? Paul was mean. Paul was threatened folk. Paul locked folk in jail. Paul beat up folk. And God knocked them down. And when God knocked Paul down, what did Paul say? Lord, will you help me? Some of y'all ain't said that. Yet. And you keep being stopping. Until you say it. Until you say it. Some of your children have never said, Lord, oh, you have anything. You don't beat them up. You make them say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. It took me 34 years to beat them up. That's what I said, Lord. Lord, you have anything. And you don't keep beating your children. Because if you don't beat them, man, you don't care about it. If he don't beat him, he don't love him. If he don't beat him, he can turn around. What happened to him? Because he also said, in the same text, I had a bad reaction to him. For we be without chastisement. Verse 8, Romans chapter 12, verse 8. Excuse me, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 8. But if we be without chastisement, we're all, all our partakers, then you are bastards. And God can let you live in sin, no problem. He can let you talk about folk, and find problems folk, and criticize folk, and talk about the past, and talk about the thinking about the relation, and he won't know about you, then let it come eat through with you. Y'all draw back in front of the speech last time. <laughs> Quench the spirit, bring the spirit, and let it come your God can let your children do anything they want to, like they want to, long they want to, how they want to, he'll do anything about it. No, he don't care. He's already decided. The judgment day is coming. So you ought to tell them that they're going through stuff because God wants them to live right. They're going through stuff because God wants them to humble themselves and give him their time, their talent, and their service. I'll finish. Christ came to die with our response. And he was a servant. There can be no service without affliction. Are you a comfortable Christian that nothing ever afflicts you and nothing ever gets to you? Then maybe God just said, you know what? I'll wait for you. 
Because see, Christians, I don't have to tell you this, you know, this, this is Christians don't have to worry about the end. We'll not stand before God and worry about what we're going to have to do the sack for the All we're going to do is stand before the sack and we're going to be the sack. Why would you, why would God whip him in and tell him to worry about it? Never told him. And at the end, he's not judging me on heaven and hell. He's judging me on my own. The decision of heaven and hell was decided by right here on earth. I'm not decision not to come to him. I'm not decision not to live to him. I'm not decision not to How can you have nothing and nothing, nothing tell us that this next time? You may get a final grade at the end of your class, but you're going to earn that grade for the end of the class. The teacher doesn't wait to the end of the class to get the F. You earn the F all the way going through. Kim, you just part of the grade. You ain't getting big help like that. They earn it not that good to get that girl. You just have to have that one get that. Go on the side. Go on the side. I'm going to give you a big deal. God's saying, what? We're not going to stand before God. We're not going to worry about what we're going to get right there's, there's more than one judgment. No time to tell you that. What's the judgment we stand? That's the middle day of the smart day. They say, sinners should not stand in front of me. They're not standing in front of me. They're not standing in front of me. They're not standing in front of me. They're just want to go this way. And even them, they'll not be judged for whether they're going to hell or not. They just pronounce the sentence. It's already been decided you're going to be cast in the lake of fire. So the city will not go to heaven hell and they'll this morning. Christ will be saved to get us back to God. Christ was afflicted to bring us back to the church. He was wounded. He bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. We did his kingdom sickening and his kingdom of God. Never forget. But he was born for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. We test high about his but him and with his stripes for healing. Our folks said that's physical. It wasn't our physical body that was keeping it out here, but our spiritual condition was healed spiritually. Christ did not complain about these afflictions. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, the sheep from the shoe of God, so he opened it. Now you here today. If you're going through afflictions, what are you going to do? How will you respond to the afflictions that God has allowed in your life? If you want to be redeemed from the guilt of sin, if you want to be given power over sin, then you're going to be healed. To turn what seemed like bad afflictions into good afflictions. May we stand for a moment. If you have one of you. A candidate for baptism, rededication, restoration, membership of our letter of Christian experience. The best thing that ever happened to me were the afflictions that God brought me. I don't like saying God brought you.
You thought you were all right then? Look at the Bible. He beat me. He beat me. He beat me. The Bible says the fruit of the Lord love it. Discourage me. When you discourage somebody, you take a, a leather step and quit. Short point for the end. Quit discourage me. He beat me. I was bleeding emotionally. He beat me. I was bleeding mentally. He beat me. I was bleeding financially. He beat me. I was bleeding academically. He beat me. I was bleeding socially. He beat me. He beat me. He beat me. Then one day I said, here my Lord. Send me. Before I was sick, I was afraid. But now, I keep this word. You're going to find me in Sunday school. You're going to find me in Bible class. You're going to find me in worship. You're going to find me in praise man. How many times do you have to complain about anything you want to do? Oh, I take a beat. I took a beat. And I was beat. So I can tell my children when God beats you, it's because they love you. When he locks up doors, and then you will have an opportunity to take your hand.